Hi there everyone, welcome back to Dandelion Delphi Tutorials and now we're going to start using code in SQL and make changes to our database. So up to now you've used your query.sql.txt and then the next line was query.open but to make changes to our database we're going to use exec SQL here instead of the dot open so execute the SQL code I'm going to start with the delete because the delete is actually quite simple it looks very much like the select we have done up to now and we can say delete and we can put a star there or we can leave the star out from and then a table name if I do run this code now I will delete all my records from TBL learners, which won't be great. It's a good time to make a backup copy of your database just in case you maybe delete the wrong records. Here's an example of using the delete, and our normal structure will be used the delete from table names. We're not going to place field names here, but from our table name and then mostly a where clause to say which one which records do we want to delete in this case i want to delete all the grade 12 so where grade is equal to 12 and your old rules still apply if this field is a number data type then we won't have quotes if it is a text data type we need the double quotes and for date time we will need hashes and now we can make changes to existing records in our database. So let's say I want to change all the learners Wi-Fi field, which was a yes, no field, to true. Uh, my update has a different structure from delete and select. So we start with update, then the name of the table, then a set and then a field name. Which fields do I want to change? I want to change the Wi-Fi field and then an equal sign and what do you want to change it to? I want to change them all to true. This example here is changing all the records in the table TBL learners to one grade higher. So I'm making a change to the grade field but I'm using the existing value in the grade field and adding one to it. So we might not always want to make a change to all our records but only to selected records and here's an example of John Smith who paid 200 Rand towards the amount that they had to pay for their camp. Um, I am using update the table TBL learners and I am changing using my set the paid field and I am adding on to his existing amount that is paid 200 Rand. But to ensure that this is not added to all the records, I now have a where clause to ensure that only John Smith's record will be updated. So my where says where the name is John and the surname is Smith. We can also make a change to more than one field at the same time so using update table set this little part does not change and then I have my first field that needs to change so I'm increasing this field with 10% then I put a comma and then I place the second field that I want to change I'm going to set the delivery field here to false and I want to apply this only to records where the title was dandelion Remember we used record count before. Now, interesting is we can actually use exec SQL either as a function or as a procedure. If you run this code, so delete all the learners where the grade was 12 and you assign query.exec SQL to inum, you will hold the number of records that were deleted in inum but maybe before you delete the records you want to ask the user are you sure you want to delete these records and display the number of records that will be deleted should they click yes 
So in this instance, we'll first run a select with what we're going to delete. So I have a select here uh, for all the grade 12 learners and a dot open. Now I'm storing the record count in inum. So in inum, I will now hold the number of grade 12 learners. I can then use a message dialog box. I'll explain all the details to you guys just now. But I can use a message dialog box and display inum in the message and ask them are they sure they want to delete this number of records. And if they then click on yes, I then have my begin and end here and I run my delete with my grade 12 learners and I exec SQL. And now all those grade 12 learners will be deleted or removed from my table. As promised, here is your example of a message dialog box. So I can use a message dialog box on its own uh, as a procedure or I can use it as a function. So in this instance, the first part here will always be a string and that's the message that the user will see. So you'll see here where it's in purple, the first argument of my message dialog box, that value displays here in the middle of my dialog box. And then a comma and my second argument is empty warning. This stands for message type. And message type is what determines what appears at the top here in red, as well as the icon that displays in here. There's also empty information and so on. Then a comma and then some square brackets. And in the square brackets, I'm going to put the buttons that I want to see on this message. So message button yes will produce the yes button. Comma and MB no is going to display the no button. I can also have a comma MB cancel maybe. And then end my square brackets with a comma zero and close the round brackets of your message dialog box. If I use this now in an if statement, I can then test what did the user click on by using equals to an MR yes. MR stands for message response. So if they clicked on the yes button, it will execute the code underneath my if statement. And for any other option, it will go to the else or continue with the code below the if statement. Here is the last bit of changes that we can make to our database. So we can insert new records. And the structure of insert you need to study because it's different from my select, delete and update. It starts with insert and into, separated by a space. And then into which table do I want to insert to? This table name is then followed by round brackets. And I list my fields here in the round brackets. Then I close the round brackets. I have the code values and in round brackets I then include the values that I want to insert into this new record. We don't have to list all our fields here in the brackets but what is important is that the values that you're sending it in the second set of brackets match these fields in NOD number, order, and data type. So number, there are one, two, three, four, five, six fields. So I have to have one, two, three, four, five, six values. Order, the name goes first. The name goes first in my values. Grade goes second. Grade is second here, and so on. And then the last one, the D of NOT stands for data type. So if first name is a text data type, I need to put the value here in quotes. For grade, it's a number data type, so no quotes. If I jump to date of birth, which is a T date time data type, I then need hashes around that value. Wi-Fi wi is a yes, no field and paid is a currency, so they don't need quotes and then I shouldn't put quotes around my values. This top example here is explaining to you how to use hard code to insert a value. But you might want to get input from the user 
and use that to insert a new record into this table. So if I go insert into table name, listing my fields, values, round brackets, now that first inverted comma there is ending my string. Then I need to add to that. Remember first name is a text data type. So the user's input, I need to use quoted string to produce the quotes around its name. Then a plus, then I need to hard code in the inverted commas, the comma, separating these values. Then I add the grade. The grade is a number, so no quoted string needed. So here we're adding the class again as quoted string, and then we have the date that needs hashes. So there I'm ending my string, adding the comma to separate it from the class, add my hash, end my string, plus here is my date variable as a string that the user entered, and then I have to end my hashes there. So add your quotes, hash, comma, add the quotes, and then also I need to remember to add my, my input for my Wi-Fi. After this Wi-Fi variable, I need to remember to close these brackets. This is a common mistake for matrix in their final exams where they forget to close these brackets. So you have to add a plus and as hard code, you will add the brackets. A good idea is that when you're opening brackets, is to immediately close them and code in between. So I told you that you don't have to list all your fields here, but there are a few things that you need to take into consideration. If you have a primary key, um, and the primary key is an auto number, then you should not list it here. But if the primary key is of any other data type, a primary key must always be inserted for both the parent and the child table. If you are inserting into the child table, then you have to ensure that you are listing the field through which the two tables are linked. In the child table, that field is actually called the foreign key. So the foreign key has to be inserted and this foreign key must be linked to a, an existing value in the parent table. Because remember I said in the previous lesson that no child can exist without a parent. So if I'm inserting a, an activity in the table that we've been using up to now, um, I'm inserting into the child table, I will have to include the company ID and the value that I give it in this part here will have to be a value that exists in TBL company, which is my parent table. This is now your time to practice. We are back in the festival program under the main menu changes. And these two activities are asking you to insert new records. Here you are asked to get some input from the user where it says make use of a dialog box. The word dialog box all over your question paper will mean you're going to use an input box if you're getting input from the user making use of a dialog box. Here's another time to practice insert. And here's an opportunity to practice update. For number six, you'll see there's more output here at the bottom. So if 30 was entered, this should be your output. And here's our last activity that will cover delete. Here I have the memo for the insert parent option and getting input from the user and calculating the ID up here and then my insert table. There's my fields listed and here are my values. Remember that round bracket? And then using quoted string around the variables for fields that have a text data type, like the company ID and the name, and then the hashes around my data string for the input from the user from the date time picker. Remember your hash at the end as well as that close bracket. 
I was also asked to display this table. This is the menu update existing data and getting input from the user here at the top. And then I needed to calculate whether I have found a, an ID as the, per the user's input. So if I run a select first and my record count is zero, it means it didn't find this ID. Else it did find it and then I can use my update statement to make changes. I was asked to make changes to the field called ticket sold and add the value that the user entered to the number of tickets that were there already. But only for the ID as per the user's input. So there's my exec SQL. And then I am displaying an updated table in my dbgrid to show you all the records from this ID. Here is my delete question. First, I'd like to calculate how many tickets were less than 100. So I can display to the user a message in the message dialog box to say, are you sure you want to delete so many records? I've used empty warning and a yes and a no button. And if they click here on MR yes, then I will delete this data where the tickets were less than 100. If they clicked on no, this message here will be displayed to say no records have been deleted. But in both instances, I'm going to show this table again, sorting the records according to the ticket sold field from the least to the most number of tickets. So we've come to the end of our sequel. Remember, similar friends will go hang out. And remember to study the different formats for your insert, update, and delete. Next, I'm going to show you how to apply this to a final paper. Hope to see you soon.